Hi, Erwan from Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, we will talk about null objects in MO2. Null objects are very powerful tools which will facilitate your animation process. You can find them in the 3D software, but also in all the compositing tools like Nuke, Flame, and After Effects. So let's start with a simple example. In this MO2 project in Final Cut Pro 10, I've got only a plane with a texture apply on it. I will add a cube. I will apply a texture from the sci-fi pack, like this one, and I apply it on my cube. Okay, that's look better. So I would like to animate the cube, and I would like that the cube roll over the plane. So every animation are based on the position of the anchor point. By default, the anchor point is at the center of the cube. So to have a correct animation, I will have to change the position of the anchor point. When you are using primitives in MO2, there is a nice feature in the anchor point parameters that give you the position presets, like top, bottom, left or right. Here, I will select the right. But if I rotate the axis, we can see that it doesn't work. I will have to put it on the bottom right. So I can add a keyframe on the first frame, move to one second, and add a new keyframe. Then I will make a rotation of 90 degrees. So for the first animation, it is easy. The problem is that if I want to continue the rolling animation, I will have to move the anchor point, and it is not possible, as if I move the anchor point, it will change the position of the cube also. And this is when the null objects are very handy. I will reset all the parameters. And I will add a null object in my scene. So what is a null object? A null object is an empty object, meaning you will never render or see it in the scene. But you will have access to all the position, rotation, scaling, anchor points and animation parameters. By itself, it doesn't have any interest, but the cool thing is that you can attach this null object to any 3D object in the scene. For example, in this case, I can position the null object in the bottom right of the cube. Then, to parent the cube to the null object, in the inspector, you just have to drag the cube over the null object. And now the cube is attached to the null object. I will rename the null object to rotation1 null. And if I animate and rotate the null object, it will affect the cube like we did with the anchor point before. The big difference this time is that you can add multiple null objects in the scene. This time, I will place the second one on the top right. And I will parent the cube to the second null object. Then I will parent the second null to the first null object. With this order, the first null object will affect the null object 2 and the cube. As you can see here. And I can create a second animation to keep the animation rolling. Using null object would give you great flexibility during the animation process. For example, I can add a third null object. With this third null object, I will add a translation to the overall animation. I will be able to choose the starting position and the ending position. Depending on the timing of the keyframe, I can give more or less speed to the animation. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, it is very easy to adjust each parameters individually without the risk to modify the other animation. But there is a second utility for the null object, which is very powerful when you want to animate the camera. To illustrate this, I will open a template title from MotionVFX. If we open the inspector, we can see that the camera is not a camera but a null object, and the camera is attached on it. So why designers from MotionVFX team are using null objects to animate the camera? Let's remove the null and the camera and add a new camera. When you need to animate the camera, like the cube before, the animation is based on the anchor point of the camera. But when you want to turn around a specific object, like a text for example, you need that the text stays in the center of the frame and it becomes very hard to be accurate and to keep all the parameters in place. There is a solution when you switch to the camera view. You can switch to the target mode by selecting an object in the camera view. For example, here I can select the title and if I use the viewer controls, you will see that the text is the target of the camera now. So now I can turn around the text and the text will be the center of my rotation. This is a very useful feature as you can switch in one click to a new object. Like here I will click on the instancer with the balls and now if I rotate the camera, the anchor point will be the instancer and no more the title. But if I want to target between the text and the instancer, there is no way to click on the empty space. But there is a solution, null object. So I can add one into the scene. And place it at the right position between the instancer and the text. Then I will parent the camera to the null object by dragging it on the null. So now, switching back to the camera view, you can be more accurate by moving the on-screen control. But also, you can use now the perspective view to adjust the position. As you've seen, using null object will help you to get a better and faster animation in your MO2 project. If you want more tutorials on MO2, don't hesitate to subscribe to the Motion VFX YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.